You want a Christmas card? You want a Christmas card? All right, here. Here's your Christmas card. Me. Yes. No. Yes. You faked it. I faked it. That whole thing, the whole production, it was all an act. Not bad, huh? What about the breathing, the panting, the moaning, the screaming? Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> the first show um, and then we were called in Jerry and I to the executive producer's office so we're, we're sitting there and he's sitting behind his desk and he's giving us the notes on the show I, I, I think you, you need to do this with this character and I, I want more conflict here and I want this and and he said his piece and then that night I was staying I was staying with Jerry in his apartment and that night I said to him I said, all right, look, I, I, I'm not going to be able to go through this. I, I can't, I, I can't listen to this, and I can't, I can't do it. I can't do the notes. I can't do it, you know. So, honestly, good luck. I was sincere. I said, really, I, I, I hope it's, I hope it's great. I hope it's a hit. But I, I can't, I can't, I can't work on this like this. I do remember you saying I can't work like this. And, yeah. But that wasn't that outstanding over the course of the nine years. But it was the first time that I. It quit. was the first yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to get that out of the way. <laughs> get into the swing of Larry quitting, which would be a regular event. He's a very persuasive man. He said, "No, no, don't worry, don't worry. I'll straighten it out. We'll, we'll fix, we'll fix this. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get what we want and all this." And I reassured him that you know this was just a phase that we were passing through, and eventually we would control the whole thing. And I guess it was just after that 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 happened. He should actually, he should actually have a job talking people out of suicide when they're on a ledge, because he's very good at it. He's very calm. He knows exactly what to say. Yeah, oh, no, your life will get better. Just come off the ledge. Everything will be fine. After Cheers repeats, Thursday night at 9.30, we put on four original episodes of Seinfeld. And they did okay. America's top comedian premieres in his unique new comedy, Seinfeld. The laughs are on the house Thursday on NBC. Our four episodes did go on the air that summer, and they did well enough to get us an order for the next mid-season, 13 episodes. And I said, oh, my God, I can't do this. How am I going to come up with 13 shows? This is ridiculous. I said, this is crazy. I'm, uh, and I was petrified. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. This thing now is, is getting much bigger than it was supposed to. I was supposed to be done with this thing. And now I'm supposed to be doing 13 shows. I'm, I'm responsible for it. I'm the executive producer of the show now. I'm completely responsible for this thing. This is mine. How, how am I going to do this? I can't do it. I cannot do it. This is insane. What have I gotten myself into? For 13, I figure we'd be on. At that point, I went, we're going we're to be on for a little while. Uh, this is going to work. Now I felt OK. Now we can get to work. Well, when we got 13 episodes, I mean, I, I just knew there was nothing in the world that could stop us now. The night that Seinfeld was going to premiere in 91 on Wednesday night, we bombed Baghdad. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. I remember that night, and uh, they were saying the tanks were rolling and the war was starting, and uh, the show wasn't going to be on. And I remember everybody being very upset about it. And we, well, this is our premiere night, and the, the show is going to be preempted. And I remember thinking, I don't, what does that mean? Does that mean anything? Well, it'll be on eventually. Assistant, very good. Oh. Uh, is there a table ready? How many? Four. <laughs> Seinfeld. Four. Oh, it'll be five, ten minutes. The first thing I remember at the Chinese restaurant is I remember the exact restaurant I was in with Larry. It was Genghis Cohen's on on Fairfax, and uh, we were waiting for a table, and I remember him writing the idea down. I thought this, this could be a pretty funny idea. Waiting in real time. 
you get 23 minutes to do the show, whatever, let's, let's just have them wait 23 minutes for a table. Uh, I read that script and I went, nothing happens. Uh, am I, am I missing, am I missing pages? Literally, they go to the restaurant, they stand around, they can't get a table. Nothing happens. Is, is this, are, we, are they trying to save money? I knew the network was up in arms about this episode. I wasn't surprised that NBC wasn't crazy about that show because, you know, not only was our show unlike any other shows, but now this show was like, uh, w within that context, this show was just like crazy extreme. I didn't get it. And, and I remember fighting that episode, looking at the, uh, the cut of the episode, and, and it was funny, but I really felt, you know, Jerry, Larry, uh, d don't, doesn't something have to happen in this show? But to their credit, the only thing that they said was, we completely disagree with this idea, but if you want to do it, go ahead. And I thought, that's, that's all you can ask for, is they gave us the shot. <laughs> like just walking over there and taking some food off of somebody's plate. I'll tell you what, there's 50 bucks in it for you if you do it. Should I do it, George? For 50 bucks? I put my face in this soup and blow. And I remember a meeting with Brandon Tartikoff. He was nervous about doing episodes like the Chinese restaurant. So I said, I will promise you that if you put this on and go forward with this thing, ultimately, we will make shows that have stories, that have plots, that are not just Chinese restaurants. I said, you have to allow us to do a Chinese restaurant type show every once in a while because that's also what's great about this show. Where's the car? Well, I, I thought it was here. You don't know where we parked? I'm sure it's right around here. Yeah, yeah, it looks familiar. I remember the elevator. There's elevators all over. Everything looks the same. But like rats in some experiment. <laughs> Parking Garage was a very exciting and extremely physically difficult episode to make. The notion of not being able to find your car was similar to the Chinese restaurant, although it wasn't in real time. We had to dismantle the entire set. And uh, they made a parking garage in our stage. Oh, God, the parking garage. We were up all night. And I remember Julia and I could not even stand. We were so exhausted. We were lying down on the floor, and they were putting makeup on us as we were lying completely prostrate. And just just forget the back of the head. Forget the hair on the back of the head. Just do the sides and the front, because we were too tired to, to stand or sit in a chair. And Michael, Michael, with that damn box. His storyline involves he's got an air conditioner in a box. So Michael said to the prop guys, put an air conditioner in there. I, you know, I want to work with the weight and the heft. It had to look real. And it was real. Michael decides he's got it on his shoulder, and he's going to lurch it right into the trunk. It's going to be spectacular. When I threw the box into the trunk of the car, I banged my face and cuts his lip on the, on the air conditioner inside the box. So now he's bleeding. Jerry and I kind of have our backs to the camera, but Julia's in plain sight, and Michael's in plain sight, and now the three of us are starting to be like this. I never broke character. So he sees her kind of giggling, and he says to her, I really hurt myself, Elaine. Eight o'clock, that could be a problem. So. <laughs> the four of them were supposed to get in the car and uh, pull out of the uh, parking garage, and that was going to be the end of the show. And there was some dialogue in the car, and, and then uh, they would pull out and, and leave. The four of them got into the car, they did their dialogue, and Kramer turned on the car. And of course, the car <laughs> was a pile of junk. And it didn't start. Come on, come on. Um, uh, unbelievable. 